Welcome back to Screen Scene. She was Tupac Shakur's wife. Keisha Mara Shakur is the only woman who can ever make that claim. And now in her first television interview, Keisha speaks out about, about her life with the slain rapper. I sat down with Keisha and talked to her about the Tupac Shakur no one knew and about his premonition of death. When we first decided to sit down and talk, that's the first thing that he would always say, Keisha, I'm not going to live you know, past a certain time or, you know, I know I'm going to get shot up. He always, he knew that. That was, you know, the one thing that he did know. Do you think people had this misconception about uh, Tupac and what he was? He had two sides to him, yes. I'm not going to say he didn't. He was, um, but at the same time, he just... Whatever he believed in, that's what he, you know, that was just his, he voiced his opinion for whatever it was that he believed in, but, it, but he also had this caring love inside that a lot of people didn't see, didn't know, you know, that, you know, he liked to give to a lot of people, he liked to help whoever it was that he could, but um, a lot of people didn't get a chance to see that. We'll have the rest of this exclusive interview with Keisha Mara Shakur tomorrow on Screen Scene. She'll tell us about her love for Tupac and what he was like as a husband. Watch for that tomorrow right here on Screen Scene. You don't want to miss it. For BET Talk, I'm Sabrina Dames. Here's Tavis Smiley. Good evening and welcome to BET Talk. Joining me is that person who uh, knew Tupac Shakur in a way that most of us didn't. His former wife, Keisha Morris Shakur, joins us here in Washington. We are also joined tonight by the publisher and editor of that magazine you just saw, Sister to Sister magazine, Jamie Foster Brown. Good to see both of you. How are you? Good to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And I'm glad <laughs> you're here. I know you came back from Miami just to do yes, our show tonight from the, did, from the Impact Convention. Mm -hmm. 83 degrees down there. Came up here to yeah, the... Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Keisha, I'm glad you're here as well. Thank you. Let, let me start by asking just a very simple question and that is um, t tell me what make made Tupac uh, different for you than he than he existed of course in the minds of other people I, I suspect that your engagement your involvement with him was on a much different level than most of us will ever uh, ever have hoped to have known him but tell me what your what your experience was like with him. well he was when I when he first approached me he was very nice very very gentle and a lot of people you know uh, the perception of the, you know, that he had out there was very a negative one, but he never at once, any time, gave me a negative perception of him at all. You are on the cover, as we just mentioned, uh, on the cover of the new, the current issue of Sister to Sister magazine, which is out now. Yes. Tell me why you decided to talk now. I mean, you, you didn't have to talk. No. Why, why, why decide to talk, and why decide to talk in such a public way on the cover of a magazine? Um, to let know, to let everyone know that we had a relationship that it was for real that it wasn't just something that just happened because he was in jail or something like that it was more to our relationship and you know our friendship than what everyone knew you know let, let me follow up on that because I wanted to, I wanted to get there and your your mentioning it makes it easier for me to bridge the gap <laughs> uh, so I'm glad you mentioned it L let me ask you how you respond to people who do in fact think uh, think that you consummated a relationship with Tupac simply because it was convenient for him at the time that he was in jail, and I think you know what I'm asking. Um, they, they don't have any, you know, any knowledge as to what our relationship was. Tupac and myself know exactly what relationship we had. You think, Jamie, let me, let me bring you in this conversation. Okay. You think that, uh, first of all, let me ask you whether or not you believe what Keisha has to say. And, well, and, sec and secondly, let me ask you whether or not readers are going to get the sense when they see this particular article, if they haven't picked up the magazine already, mm -hmm. if they're going to get the sense that she is, in fact, telling uh, the truth about the fact that there was more to their relationship than trying to serve his needs, quote unquote, while he was incarcerated. Well, I mean, they, Tupac, I met Keisha because Tup I had to go up and interview Tupac when he was going to be locked down for something. Remember the woman, who, they said that he was harassing a, a jail uh, security guard. So a lot of what she is saying, he actually said to me about her, and Keisha was living there. I mean, this is the worst town I have ever seen. This poor child up there by herself, basically. I mean, he brought some friends up there later to be with her, but Keisha literally moved up there and you went to see him in the morning and stayed with him about 2.30, then you were shopping with him, bought him clothes every day. So, I mean, I saw that. He talked to me about that also, and then he said that uh, uh, I could still drop loads, but we don't want to consummate it here, and this is not the place. It was very holy for him 
to his marriage with her. So I, I think I'm hearing you say, and I, I don't want to, I don't mean to be graphic or, ex, or yes, you or, do. Well, I do. I, do. <laughs> I, I think I think I'm hearing you say that while Keisha and Tupac were married, that there was in fact no conjugal relationship between right. the two of them while right. he was right. incarcerated. He, he, a lot of people would think it was a marriage of convenience right. and that, but it, they, he decided, they he, decided right. not to. He didn't, he didn't want to. And, and tell me again from, in, in your words, why, why he didn't want to do that. Cause that, that you know a lot of folks watching right want, now don't understand what. He that. didn't want people to, to think that that's why he married me. He didn't marry me just for that sole purpose or anything like that. He married me because he loved me. Okay. You but, know, we, we actually were engaged to be married way before he was even incarcerated. Okay, let me ask you then, as one who loved Tupac and knew him in the way that you knew him, how do you respond? How, I shouldn't say respond. How, how does it make you feel when you see stories as the one that we just did at the top of the show with Sabrina? Where you, where you, you know, as a reporter, you have to mention you know, the ups and the downs right. of his life. Right. He was, in fact, uh, incarcerated, as you well know, for an offense against a woman, et cetera, et cetera. How, do you, how, how does it make you feel when you see stories about Tupac that really show a side of him that was less than kind to African-American women, or just it, women in general. Well, it bothers me, but, um, you know, I didn't know that part of him. You know, I was not never faced with, that, with any of those issues like that. I was with him through some very, you know, difficult times throughout his life, and I was basically his backbones. You know, he confided in me, and, you know, he never, he never treated me bad, so I, I can't, you know, go on what the media has portrayed him to be, because I didn't know that. Really? Let me ask you, forget relying on what the media has to say mm -hmm. then. How does one in your position come to feel comfortable being in a situation and being in, a, in an intimate relationship with a man who has in fact been known, or at least certainly reported, uh, to have been, as I said earlier, less than kind. I'm just using that for lack of a better phrase. But certainly less than kind to, to, to African American women. How do you, how'd you get yourself in a mindset to be comfortable in a relationship with a man who had that kind of reputation to begin with? Because he was not less than kind to me. Um, he was, he was a very caring individual, you know, he was very, those instances were very few out of, of a whole lot of good, so I can't go by just, you know, a few instances that has happened, you know, to him throughout his life, but. Well, he brought you the dog when you were, when he would leave her alone, and he felt bad about her being left alone a lot. He bought her, or he would buy her a cocker spaniel, bought her a cocker spaniel, and said, I've got something for you. He bought you. He would, he would buy her things, and, and he was in touch with her all the time. He was writing her, calling her. And the, the main thing that is that she, he called her all the time, Keisha, you know, guess who I just met her? Keisha, oh, yeah. look who I just, you know. So she was like, um, well, he stayed at her house a lot also, when, even though he had a hotel, right? Mm -hmm. She was like his getaway place. Mm -hmm. uh, i got to take a break here. When we come back, we, of course, will start taking your phone calls across the country. For our guest tonight, Akeisha Morris Shakur, the former wife of the late Tupac Shakur, and Jamie Foster Brown, publisher and editor-in-chief of Sister to Sister magazine. Your calls in just a moment, so stay with us. Welcome back to BET Talk. I'm Tavis Smiley. We're joined tonight by the former wife of the late Tupac Shakur, Keisha Morris Shakur, and also joined by Jamie Foster Brown of Sister to Sister Magazine. I want to go to phone calls in just a second, but let me, let me back up. There are a couple of questions. We got off to a running start. There are a couple of basic things I kind of wanted to cover before we get to the phone calls. T tell me very quickly how you and Tupac Shakur met. I'm, I'm interested to hear that story. And I'm also interested to hear how your family felt about your being involved in a relationship with Tupac. Uh, Tupac and I met at a club in New York, and we spoke very briefly for about five minutes. And he, then we later on met about a month later, and he remembered who I was and remembered the conversation that we had, and he offered to take me out. Okay. And, what, and what, so what did your family think about your, your being nervous. involved, your being married to him? They were nervous, yeah. you know. Um, he had sent me flowers from Hawaii, and actually my father was there to in intercept those flowers and he read the card and was all through the you know the whole yeah. package and he wanted to know is this the rapper yeah. and I just told him mind his business yeah. and uh, my mother Tupac and, and her didn't get off to a good start but they later on things kind of warmed up a little yeah, bit warmed up a bit you know because she was skeptical right. let's take some phone calls we'll go to California first to talk to Clayton Clayton thanks for calling you on BET talk uh, good evening ladies hi hi, hi there I uh, I read in this this weekend's paper about the financial doings by um, Suge Knight, and mm -hmm. I hope uh, family members get some of that money. He was ripping them off and playing book games and all that. Uh, what do you think about, uh, you think there's going to be a re resolution where you actually get some of the money and uh, get it out of his pocket? Um, well, I'm not quite 
sure as to what the legalities to you know is behind his estate and you know financial parts about it. No, I'm not seeking any compensation from him or anything like that. When, when did the two of you get divorced anyway? When, did the, when was the divorce? Uh, the divorce was March of '96. '96. Yeah. Does that with that entire? I guess you wouldn't be entitled to receive something from his estate anyway, since you were divorced before. Oh, right. Before he died. Right, but I was, you know, throughout our legal proceedings and stuff like that. I was never seeking anything from the beginning. Okay. Let's go to Jason in New Jersey. Jason, thanks for calling. You're on BET Talk. Hello, yes. How you doing? And um, I was wondering, as far as you know, was Tupac into the gangs deeply, as they say, and how they portrayed in, like, certain, you know, incident in the, the cat, the ballroom or whatever it was, where the jumping took place? How was all that portrayed? And do you know anything about all that? No, I, I don't know anything about I'm not familiar with any of that. I wasn't out there at the time. and You weren't married to him at that time, were you? With, at, uh, I think he's talking about the final, the fight. The fight before, before right. right. Well, no, we weren't married, but I saw him the yeah, day before. I know before. you saw him the day before. I saw him the day before. I saw him the day before. Yeah. <laughs> she was with him. Yeah. I was about to ask you, Jamie, speaking of, you know, of, of Keisha, you in this interview with Keisha in the, in the current issue of the magazine, this is really just for you, a continuing uh, uh, interview and a long line of interviews you've had with Tupac and those around him. Right. I'm, wondering, I'm wondering whether or not you learned anything uh, over the last year or so about this whole alleged East Coast, West Coast conflict. Oh. I, I, I just didn't think that it existed. I mean, you got Coolio going to the, who's from the West Coast, going to the East Coast. You got Naughty by Nature going from the East Coast to the West Coast. It was just a couple of individuals within that. It, I, it's never, never been a, like an all-out war, you know. It's never been like that. I mean, people, they go back and forth all the time. I understand, uh, Jamie, that uh, Afini Shakur, Tupac's mother, mm -hmm. uh, is now in the process of suing Death Row yeah. Records yes. and Suge Knight. Yes. Uh, and I, I wanted to piggyback on the, on the, the, the question that one of the callers asked uh, about whether or not they're going to get, you know, whether Keisha or others are going to get any, the family was going to get any of the money mm -hmm. that Suge has made off of Tupac. Um, mm -hmm. What do you know about this lawsuit and what may come out of it well, as there, it relates there to There's so many. Well, she has a lawsuit against him. What is it for? $17 million, I, I think, right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that she's going to get something out of that. I mean, um, Interscope and Death Row are just um, having s such bad publicity right now. It's not good. It's not good for business. You know, they really need to settle this and just make it all, you know, go away, kind right. of. We don't know yet, but that, but there's so many lawsuits. I mean, there's lawsuits against his Tupac estate and then lawsuits that she has to go after Death Row. Because when Tupac came out, I think he was just ready to record everything, right? That's what he did. He just went in the studio almost 24 hours a day. And you're not involved in any of these lawsuits in any sort of way? No. Okay. Let's go to Virginia and talk to Jamal. Jamal, thanks for holding. You're on BET Talk. Yes, I would like to ask um, Ms. Moore something. Uh, pertaining to the speculations behind the faking of Tupac Shakur's death, uh, his rumor behind uh, the, the Machiavellian theory and everything else, do you feel as though Tupac would have done something like that? Do you feel as though he would have faked his death because of maybe record sales or maybe enemies or or any type of reasons why, you know, do you feel as though he would do something like that and put his life away and away from the spotlight and everything? Do you feel as though he would have, um, you know? Jamal, I think we get the gist of your question. We, we actually had Snoop on the show uh -huh. shortly after Tupac's death, um, we, and we almost had to have Snoop on because there were so many people, as you well know, around the country who were buying into this, this rumor exactly. that Tupac was not dead. So with that being said, how do you respond to that? No, Tupac would never, I don't think I, he would fake his death. It, it's It's... You know, the whole thing about, you know, all of these rumors that's out. No, Tupac would never do anything because he didn't consider himself to be a coward. So he would never do anything like that. More of your calls, more of your calls, I should say, for Keisha and Jamie in just a second. You're watching BET Talk on Black Entertainment Television. We are back in just a moment, so stay with us. To BET Talk, join us tomorrow night for BET Talk when our guest will be Essence Magazine Editor-in-Chief Susan Taylor and her husband Kefra Burns will be here sharing knowledge they say can help shape your life. They have a new book out called Confirmation that they have written together. And again, tomorrow night, Susan Taylor and her husband, Kefra Burns, our guest tomorrow night, live here at 11 p.m. Eastern on BET Talk. Hopefully, you'll be here for our conversation with them tomorrow night. Tonight, though, we continue our conversation with Keisha Morris Shakur, the former wife of the late Tupac Shakur, and Jamie Foster Brown, another editor-in-chief of another magazine, that one being, of course, Sister to Sister magazine. Before I go to uh, Yolanda in Texas, Keisha, I wanted to ask, we just saw in that video um, a picture of uh, uh, Afini Shakur, Tupac's mother. I'm wondering whether or not you had, during the time you were married to Tupac, or now have, 
any kind of relationship with his mother? Yes, at one time when we were married, we did, but as of now, no. So you, have you spoken to her at all since the no. death? No, not at all. No. Okay. Let's go to Yolanda in Texas. Yolanda, thanks for holding. You're on BET Talk. Yes, I want to ask her, uh, was he romantic? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Very romantic. I used to come home all the time and there was flowers or he would just make arrangements for us to go somewhere. I came home from work one day and there was a limo outside waiting for us to go to Atlantic City and stuff like that. How, how did, how did the, the, the criminal cases and, and, and the crime and the violence that Tupac, for that, I, don't, I shouldn't say was involved with, but certainly that surrounded his life, how did that affect? That had to have some, you know, some pretty negative consequences uh, on the relationship. Um, actually, yes, it was, it was hard during the times of his, um, of his trials and stuff like that because, you know, I saw what he was going through. You know, and it was difficult because I couldn't help but so much. The only thing I can do is just to show him that I was, I was supporting him. We talked earlier, of course, uh, well, I think one of the callers mentioned earlier this whole East Coast, West Coast conflict. I'm wondering whether or not in your time with him you ever heard him talk about, ever mention um, uh, the conflict, the alleged conflict between um, Death Row and Bad Boy Entertainment, Tupac versus Biggie. You ever hear any conversation, ever, ever, ever a part of anything going on in, in his world about that, about that conflict? Yes, I've heard him mention. We discussed a lot of things, anything and everything, but I can't remember as to, you know, probate him what exactly he said. Okay. Let me, let me fast forward then. At, you and Tupac were, uh, were married while he was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Stayed married for how long? For exactly. a little under a year. A little under a year. Mm -hmm. And then the marriage was annulled. Right. Why, tell me, tell me what, what, what that was all it. about. You annulled it. I annulled it. Why did you do that? Just for, you know, for... Well, we were going through difficult, you know, times, but um, basically for tax reasons and, you know, lawsuits and just, it just wasn't working out. Yeah. Cause you know, about, well, we said it, we, we were going to try it once he was released from, from jail. We were right. definitely going to redo it again. And that never no, happened? No. Yeah. Because I was going to ask you that you, obviously there's a big difference between divorcing someone right. and having a marriage annulled. That's what I was advised to do right. by, right. My, by my lawyers. They said that that would be best for me. You know, they were for my interest, and they yeah. said that, as you know, for divorce, they would rather me annul it. Yeah. What do you say to people, Jamie, who um, will read your story in Sister Sister magazine and still not believe respectfully what Keisha's saying that it really wasn't, she wasn't the one who pushed to have this thing annulled, that it was in fact Tupac doing it. Once he got released, there was no reason to to remain married. It was time to get back to being a player. As, I, as, I, as a matter of fact, as I recall, in an interview he did when he was released, when he was asked why he got divorced, right. uh, why the marriage ended, he said, I'm a, you know, I learned I'm a player and I'm going to be a player for life, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't see that one. No, I didn't see that one either. What did, what did, what did, what did, I would have got him for that. But, um, oh, but she, uh, I mean, but Keisha talks in the, in, there's a second interview that comes uh, after this one where she talks about that, that he would call her up and, uh, she, or, and she'll say, you hurt my feelings when you said that, you know. And, and he said, oh, I, you know, he would apologize. But and they would still. We still had a relationship. Yeah, they still had a relationship. After, even after the marriage. Even though. after we were married. So if that was the case, you know, yeah. he, Tupac was the type of person, if he was through with you, that was it, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, he, that wasn't the case with me. He, um, we were still friends up until the day. And like we said, she was with him the day before he was right. shot. That she, you know, she was with him in, in New York. The hotel Nico. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Nico hotel. All right. Our remaining right, moments in just a second more of your phone calls. So stay with us. We are back on the other side of this break. Being married to Tupac for that one year. I learned about his world. Um, I learned a lot from him. You know, especially like the whole industry thing. Um, but what about your personal growth and personal development? Anything in oh, that regard? Oh, I learned, I know so much about him. Mm. Um, I just want him to be remembered in a positive way because it was a lot of pos a positive that outweighed all the negative stuff. Right, the big question, after that experience with Tupac, you're going to get married again? Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Not turning up to the concept of marriage. No. Thanks for coming by. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice. Jamie, good to see you as Thank always. You. All right. Thank you for being here tonight. Hope you enjoyed our conversation. We will be back tomorrow night, as I said, with Susan Taylor and her husband, Kefra Burns, to discuss their new book, Confirmations. We hope you'll be here tomorrow night. I, of course, will talk to you tomorrow morning on the Tom Joyner Morning Show. See you back here tomorrow night at 11. Until then, keep the faith. This video was brought to you by LeclaireCouture.com. Head on over to www.lacliarecouture.com. There are very affordable and reasonable women's fashion. Head on over there right now and take a look and get something nice for yourself. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.